Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my video. Right now, I am at Walmart. Um, I went to Walmart to get um, something, and I was in there for no more than 15 minutes. I came back out, and guess what? My car is dead at this point. Car is dead at this point. Um, it's not 100% dead. It's just that I can't get it to start. It's not starting on me. I can't get it to crank. Um, you know, everything else works in the car. Everything else works in the car. Um, all the lights work on the dash. Radio works. Heat, heat doesn't work, but the blow motor works. Everything works. Even the alarm works, but I can't get the car to, um, to crank. It's just nothing. I hear a click. It, it doesn't crank. I hear a click, but it doesn't crank. So I was thinking maybe it was the... Um, the battery that that was the issue. So what I did was I actually turned on the headlights, went out, checked it out. It's nighttime. It's bright. Those headlights are bright. So I was thinking, is it maybe it's the headlights? I, I don't know. I don't. I, maybe it's the battery or whatever. You know, not the headlights, but the battery. So I was like, maybe it's the battery that's the problem. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know. I don't know. So I actually, um, you know, popped the hood. Checked out the battery, looked at the terminals. Um, the terminals look pretty dirty. So I actually took out a wrench set, uh, took the terminals off the battery, um, took a wire brush, cleaned it off, popped it in. You know, it, the, I cleaned up the terminals pretty good. Terminals and the, uh, the, the cables. Cleaned them up pretty good, popped it in, and went back into my car, tried to start it. It didn't start. And that was like the 15th time I tried starting it. So I'm like, okay, it's probably not the terminals that's causing it. I went and checked the ground wire. The ground wire looks good. The ground wire looks good. Probably not that issue. But um, <clears throat> I did uh, go back to uh, Wal Walgreens. Um, got a can of Coke and pretty much poured Coke on the terminals and the ground Try to start up nothing. So at that point, um, you know, it wasn't the terminals or something like that. I had to ask somebody to give me a jump. They jumped it. You know, they jumped it. They put the cables on. I tried to crank the car. Nothing, nothing. So basically, I had them put it on and <clears throat> put it on the battery and uh, waited five minutes, three minutes, whatever. Try to crank it. Nothing. So at that point, I knew it wasn't the battery. I knew 100% it wasn't the battery. Um, my other thought was maybe it's the alternator, but I didn't leave my car running. Um, I didn't leave my car running at all, so I don't think it was the alternator that was the issue. Normally, uh, when the alternator is the issue, normally the car would die out on you with the engine running. You, either it's on the road or it's idling or something like that, it would just go dead on you. But here's the test for it. I know it's 100% not the alternator because, first of all, I actually swapped out the alternator like six months ago. And uh, I know it's not the alternator because... I actually did, um, you know, once another power source, like cables from another car is put on the battery, if it was the alternator, the car would turn on. Once you take the, the cables off, the car would die out. At that point, you know that it's the alternator that's the issue. Did not happen here because I didn't hear a crank. The car didn't crank up, didn't turn on. None of that happened. So at that point, I knew for 100% uh, fact that it was not the um, uh, alternator or the battery or any of the terminals, I could, I could, you know, all that stuff I could eliminate. So at this point, I was thinking to myself, what else could it be? What else could it be? Um, maybe it's the relays or the fuses. So I, okay, so I went, pop the pop the cover to the, to to the fuse box, and I was looking at the fuses. <clears throat> all the fuses look good. So I checked out the. The relay to the starter. I was thinking maybe it's the relay to the starter. I was hoping it's the relay to the starter because AutoZone's a couple of blocks. I could just walk a couple of blocks, get the relay, pop it in. Not a problem. Even with the fuse, not a problem. Anyway, I actually swapped out the relay from another, you know, that, that went to another part of the car. I swapped out the relay, you know, whatever that, that relay is to whatever it was that relaying to. I swapped that out for the starter relay and nothing happens. I get the same thing nothing happens <clears throat> now I can't be 100% sure it's not the relay 
because you know I'm swapping out one relay for another relay. So if the relay, the starter relay had issues, I mean, you know, I actually popped in the relay to the other starter, and if they had issues, then you know, you know, maybe that that portion of it was causing it not to start, not and not the starter. I don't know. Sucks, sucks, right, guys? It really sucks. But I can tell 100% it's not a relay. But I mean, I'm like 99% sure, 90% sure it's the relay. It's not the relay. Reason being is that every time I try to crack the car up, um, I do hear a click. It's just not starting up. I do hear a click. It's just not turning over. It's not cranking. It's not cranking. I do hear a click. Normally, if you hear a click, it means either the the relay's working and it's coming from the relay, or the the starter motor is is clicking. It's just the throw noise, the star motor is clicking. The star motor is just not engaging. So I could pretty much rule out the relay. Um, as far as the fuse is concerned, I was looking at the fuses and I was looking to see whether there was any burnt fuses. <clears throat> Didn't not see any burnt fuse. <coughs> but um, I couldn't test it out 100 percent because I don't did not have a uh, I don't have a fuse tester on me. But here's the thing about that. Um, I've had situations where a fuse, a fuse had kept my car from running. Uh, not this car, but uh, cars that I've had previously. Um, and and none of those actually, you know, were the same symptoms as this car right now. Um, basically, one of those situations I had was the main fuse died. I was getting no electricity in the car. The main fuse died. I was getting no electricity in the car whatsoever. And it turned out that was the main fuse that connected the battery to the fuse box. Battery to the fuse box. Um, once I swapped that out, the car, everything worked. All the electricity worked. Everything works. This is not the case here because, unfortunately, it's not the case here because, um, you know, I am getting electricity, 100% electricity to everything, including the alarm. Uh, the remote, I'm getting electricity to the power windows, I'm getting electricity everywhere, so it's not the main fuse. All right, I'm thinking maybe it's um, a secondary fuse, like a starter fuse, or what is fuse to the starter. <clears throat> but here's the thing I don't, I don't know if there's a starter fuse, I don't think there is to this car, but uh, as far as my second thing, the second thing that caused my fuse, um, the second fuse issue that I had. As far as my experiences with fuses, not you know causing the car not to start, it was a blown fuse either to the fuel pump or to the car's computer. All right, fuel fuel pump or the car's computer. All right, and uh, in that case, it would crank up. Everything works. It would crank up, but it would just wouldn't turn over. It would crank. It wouldn't turn over. In this case, however, I get no crank whatsoever. Everything works. It's just not cranking at all. So I can just rule that out. That's not the that's not the problem here. And at this point, you know, the only thing I could think of is the starter. Now I did not think it was the starter because I did swap out the starter about eight months ago. I I swapped it out eight months ago. Um, and um, I did buy a refurbished starter from AutoZone for 150 instead of brand new one. Um, and um, I probably put in maybe like I don't know, like 10,000 miles, <clears throat> 10,000 miles on this car, 10,000 miles on the starter since. And um, I, I, I'm just hoping that that's not the case because it would absolutely, I would be. Uh, annoyed that that was the case because I bought a starter that lasted me like for eight months. But but I've been told, I've heard that when they, you know, I didn't want to buy a brand new starter. It's like twice twice. It's like three hundred dollars instead of like one fifty. Well, with tax, it'll be like three three thirty three forty. I wasn't gonna do that. Um, yeah, and then both these starters are hundred percent warranted, like lifetime warranty or whatever. Anyway, um, I did buy the refurbished one. I was, I was, I, I read somewhere that uh, as far as refurbished starters is concerned, um, they only swap out the part that's broken and not, not. They don't actually replace or any of the major parts. They only replace the part that's broken. So when you get a refurbished starter, you know, I don't know how they clean it up as, 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 
well as they do because it, they look brand new. They only fix the one part that's broken. They only fix that one part that's broken and the rest of the starter or the alternator or whatever that's refurbished has you know 99% like like has like you know whatever the mileage that was on the car when you when when that when that when that starter was you know given to them when the core of the starter was given to them um and uh I'm just hoping that's not the case here because right now I'm actually waiting for uh triple A to tow my car. Um, I'm waiting for them to call, get back to me because I called them up like 15 minutes ago. And uh, man, this guy this is gonna be a waste of time for me. It's gonna it's, it really does suck because I gotta do I gotta do some other errands and stuff like that. I gotta do a whole bunch of other stuff, and this is just putting a, a, a wrench in in in. Uh, all right, I'm I'm gonna keep you guys updated, guys. All right, uh, if you guys are in the same situation with me, I um, really do hope this video has helped you guys out. But I'm gonna keep you guys updated on this. All right, guys. So, man. All right, I did wait. I did wait like two hours for for a tow truck to tow my car towed it to my house and uh, I actually did check out all the fuses with a few tests with a fuse tester all the fuses were fine um, wasn't quite sure about the relay so I actually went to AutoZone got a relay for it popped it in and uh, nothing happened so it definitely was not the relay that was causing it it definitely wasn't the fuses um, the terminals I cleaned out pretty good um, and I actually did take out the ground, cleaned up that, put it in, nothing. So at that point, I knew like 90% was a starter. I went and, and, and pretty much took out all the stuff, um, got to the starter. What I did was I put a line from the, uh, the positive of my battery to the solenoid of the starter, the terminal on the solenoid of the starter and tried to turn on. Um, unfortunately nothing happened so I knew for a fact at that point that it was a starter that was the problem because I did test that test it out so what I did was I took it out went to AutoZone um, told them about the situation um, I had my phone number with them so they knew it was 100% warranted um, I actually tried to talk them into getting giving me a brand new starter because of this situation because I understand that the, 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 the starter is 100% warranted but but you gotta understand the situation. Time is money. I wasted about three hours, four hours yesterday. I wasted about three, four hours going back and forth to AutoZone, taking out the starter, putting it back in. I mean that that cost me money. So I was I was I told them you know you know maybe you guys could compensate me with a brand new starter. Did not want to do that. So you know instead of you know paying three hundred uh, for a brand new starter. And not getting anything out of it, you know. Instead, I I actually um, got another refurbished starter, popped it in, turned the car on, it started up right away. Turn it off, turn it on, start up right away. Not a problem. So it was 100% the starter that was the problem. Um, so it 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 doesn't make, you know, even though it's resolved, it, I'm I'm still pretty annoyed at the fact that I only got like eight months out of the out of the starter. I was pretty annoyed at that. I was so pretty annoyed at at that whole entire situation, but but it is what it is. Nothing uh, nothing I could have done about it. <coughs> at least I wasn't stuck on the road or whatever. I mean that would have been like a worse situation. I think if I if the alternator died on me, and I was stuck on the road somewhere. That's a dangerous situation. But that's a story for another day. If that actually, actually comes up with this car. Um, I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, if you guys, if this has helped you guys out in any way, um, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. If you guys have any comments, please leave me a comment in the comment section. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope, I hope this has helped you guys out in some way. I mean, I went through all the procedures, pretty much all the procedures that you can do yourself as far as trying to figure out um, you know, you know, a, a no start issue. So hopefully that has helped you guys out. But regardless, 
regardless, guys, if you guys have any comments, please leave um, your comments, guys. All right? All right, guys. Take care.